you found a pretty fabric, but it has a border on it. How are you going to work with that? I'll show you. Coming up. Hey, Chanel here bringing you weekly videos to help you get better and better with your fashion sewing and be more creative too. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on a new video. So you found a really pretty fabric and it has a huge border on it. <laughs> so what do you do with it? A lot of patterns won't fit um, in here because you have to have a pattern that's very square for it to follow the grain and then lay right on here so you'll find like if you have patterns that have curves in them and which are a lot of patterns that you can't use a border print and also if you're making a skirt out of a border print you have to know where your length is going to go so a lot of times doing a muslin of it like a it's called a toil um, like a sample of it knowing getting the exact length will help you um, or kind of you know planning that in for your fitting is like you know being able to kind of have extra on the bottom or wherever you're cutting to make sure it's gonna work so borders are a little tricky but they're so pretty so they're they're worth the little extra work on it I'll actually show you this is the fabric I um, I had it for my school and I did have a lot of my students make skirts out of this fabric and we just had to really you know um, measure a little extra accurately <laughs> a lot of times I'll just kind of get an estimate and then they make their skirt and then we hem it but this one we're like okay we got to get it right on there so um, it turned out really good but I had extra fabric left and I thought I'm gonna make me some pants I just did some elastic waist pants um, band on it and then but this part right here ended right here in this kind of itches when I wear it so it's like I feel it once in a while because it's metallic threads but it's just a pant that goes right to the border and I love these and I love the palazzo part of it so it's a little bit full um, also if you're doing slim pants they don't work so well either so you gotta really you're very limited on the patterns that you use but I brought out um, a couple photos that might help you so there's a different kind of border you'll also find borders in knits and all those are real comfortable here's a cute little skirt border with uh, little mouses is that that Ratatouille movie looks kind of like it that's so cute huh <laughs> I love that I think that might even be an apron but here's a border um, all the way around it too that really had to I would have liked that to be like right here I would have shortened it um, right there instead of it being in the middle but really pretty so and here's another this one's a border right here but you can see it's not a circle skirt because it has to gather in because it's got to be a square and then go in like that so you really have to adjust it now pattern wise is um, pattern wise what you buy are look for patterns that have um, a lot of times you see a pattern that's showing a border the the person wearing it with a border then you know it's probably set for a border which is really great but you'll see um, square cut patterns and a lot of times I'll open the pattern up and look at the shape of the patterns and if they're square they're probably going to work on it I mean you have to just really spend time cutting and laying out patterns when you have borders on it so um, here's another right here so she's a border she has it used it up on the top too you can also do like little uh, you know crop tops that aren't going to get tucked in and then place the border on there if it's just a real square cut those are really fun um, used to do that when I was thinner I'd make little short crop tops <laughs> then here's a real pretty border too but it goes in a line but you'll notice it's a pleat there's pleats on it so it, that means the pattern is cut square right there and then here's another one I love this one too it's a lace right here this one actually this could have been in the fabric or this could have been a lace added on and looks like a border so then it's got a paper bag waist up here so it's um, somewhat square again so um, border prints on fabrics if you find one um, get it <laughs> and, um, and experiment with it also what you might find too let me see if this fabric you might find this one this fabric did have it actually it had a border up here and then it had the border on the side right here and I um, 
ended up with a lot of this type of cut a big strip of it off and now I'm gonna put it on to a skirt I have a skirt idea that I want to show you and I'll show you how to use it back for another day of sewing got my trim border trim all trimmed oh it really didn't take too long actually I was surprised so I just have all this trimmed I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with those little parts here I think I'm gonna have to put that stitch witchery glue on it on the fabric there because I'm just gonna sew along the scalloped edges here so I have that trimmed now have to place it on my skirt and I have my skirt done ready to go so short if this doesn't work out it's just a cute little short skirt although I'm not gonna wear a skirt this short but I could always add like another kind of border like a black solid black or something like that or teal I don't know but um, I don't know how this actually matches so much but <laughs> um, uh, pretty border uh, all I gotta do is sew it on you can always take it off right that's what's so cool about the border especially if you have a long piece like that so I'm gonna go ahead and pin this on uh, then try it on and uh, make sure the length is right uh, before I actually sew it and then I'll show it to you on the dress form Wow I tried this on it fits perfect <laughs> and the border although I think it looks when I look at it like this I it doesn't quite match but when I had it on it like flowed it was weird <laughs> I think I need to look at it like in the daylight or something I don't know and then put a black uh, uh, shirt on because uh, that's kind of how I'm gonna do it actually the black shirts really gonna pull this together so um, I'm gonna go ahead with it because it's looking really cool now the problem is I got to get this all balanced um, on the edge so I have to find a spot and then um, go around it I'll show you how I'm gonna tackle that and I probably should have uh, went ahead and hemmed this before I pinned it all on because um, actually the hem was really good I just have to roll it up like that it would have been easier to to do it but and I also ran I also had exactly enough it actually overlapped it just a little bit I thought I was gonna have to piece it together another part of it but it, it worked out really good right, this is how I'm gonna tackle this I think I'm gonna find points right here where the overlock is hitting right here so right on top of those two paisley prints and then I want to pull the pins in the direction I'm going to pull because I'm going to do those basic ones. So I'm going to put pins I think like on every paisley and then make sure it's like right on the edge of the overlock and then it should be all even on there. It's just going to be a lot, a lot of pins. I can kind of go this way and then let's get that part there and then I think I'll be stitching around like this on the black part and I have to come up like this go through like that and then go back over these I think I'm gonna have to uh, can either leave them which isn't I'll, I'll do that first and if they kind of start freaking out I'll uh, <laughs> add some of that webbing to it right now the main part is to get this border on even and I just got to take my time and pin it and I pin this whole border on with the pins going in the wrong direction so now I got to switch them all out which I guess isn't a big deal but um, I hate getting to the sewing machine and having the pins all go on the other way and then you got to change them all it's one of my pet peeves anyway all right I'm gonna finish this and uh, I guess I'm gonna just go ahead and sew it yeah Okay, I think I'm just going to start a little bit up here. And I'll come back and stitch that part later. 3.0. And I'm going to have to rear stitch it. It's going to be a lot of turning. I'll get the hang of this in a little while. But first off, when you start, you always have to get the hang of it. Curves. Oh, I hate curves. <laughs> I'm going to have to do this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Whose idea was this? 
And this is going to be a bit of a bear. even went on the fabric. Nope. <laughs> okay. Just keep it this way. See you're getting faster at it already. Just keep feeling fabric around. I guess I just gotta keep feeling for it. Don't want anything to get caught because then you don't want to like take stuff apart. This. Okay, coming into the home stretch. Okay, now I just have to figure out how to end this part. I have to do that at the table. Oh, that looks good. It's all on there. I think it's got it pretty balanced on there. And now what I'll do is I think I'm just going to pink this edge right here so it doesn't fray so much underneath there. that. I'll have to pink the other edge too. I'm going to match this up right here. Wow. I was wondering what I was going to do with this corner and then it turned out perfectly. And I think I just got to, I think I'll start with the, yeah, I'll do that part. I'll pink this part too. Um, also, I got to worry about the Huh, I may not be able to stitch this down until I get the hem done because what am I going to do when that gets there? I don't know. So stitch this double layer here and I'll fold this here. I could leave it raw but that will actually fray. I think I'll get it right there. And right there. Nobody will know it's joined. Wow, so cool. Then I'll just stitch, I'll probably right here, actually I'll start here and stitch there and then I gotta go around and finish this hem and this hem will be pretty simple. I'm just gonna do a 50-50 on it and then stitch it right there. I could just, I could actually still set this up and just stitch over it. That's actually probably the best bet. Yeah, so I'll just do this. Go ahead and finish that all up. Stitch it all together. That's what it needs to do anyway. Back from the ironing board, this all came out nice. And I have the hem ready to go. I just blended it right into to each other. It looks really good. And then this looks like a nice, um, man, I really like the way this happened. This looks like a band on there. It turned out really good. And then this is just a 50-50 roll up. Pressed it really nice. Now I have to stitch it. I think I want to stitch it, looking at this, I want to stitch it from the top side because I want to miss this, although the black stitch will just hide right in there, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think these are all kind of at different levels. Huh. Yeah, maybe I'll just sew it from the back side. It's much easier to sew it here because then I can get it right on that line. All right, I'm going to go and stitch that. Skirt is done. That turned out so pretty. I just love using the borders this way. Oh my gosh, just trim them off. So now you'll never look at a border the same way. You'll be like, how can I cut that off and put it onto something else? So, <laughs> but uh, wow, this looks really pretty. This is gonna be really fun to wear. And um, I love my boutique work and my boutique skirt. I can also one day, if I'm bored with this, I can pop it off. I can put this onto something else, put another border on that skirt, or just a plain black border. So look around on uh, some fabric websites of border prints and see what's out there. A lot of times you'll see the borders on both ends, so you actually have multiple. Um, and then, you know, kind of zoom in on it and see if you can cut it off or, you know, all kinds of, I don't know. Border prints are not as limiting as we thought. So, I will see you in the next so bit.